So Venezuela's pretty rotten government has been in power for a long time, and it's been able to pull that off in part because it rules over a population that is not armed. The only people with guns in Venezuela are members of the military or criminal gangs, sometimes working for the government. Law-abiding citizens are at their mercy. Yesterday, even MSNBC had to admit this because it's true. You have to understand in Venezuela, gun ownership is not something that is open to everybody. So if the military have the guns, they have the power. And as long so this is one of those ideas that is now floating around in the Democratic primary, as you're aware. Eric Swalwell running for president has said it out loud. Let's just take the guns away from the population. Here we have kind of a case study in what it looks like when that happens. Venezuela. Tell us how that population got disarmed. In 20, 20, excuse me, sorry, in 2012, the legislature passed and then in 2013 was implemented what amounted to a gun ban. It sort of had the appearance of a change in the licensing system, but it, it basically prohibited people from acquiring arms. And then in 2013, the, the dictator Maduro um, also announced that all gun stores uh, would be closed. So it's impossible for anyone to legally acquire uh, a firearm or ammunition. And the Venezuelan government also has the uh, sort of the same theory that you see when people talk about gun buybacks in the United States, as if the government owned the gun and then is going to buy them back uh, from citizens. Uh, in, in Venezuela, the law actually says all guns are owned by the government, and the government can recuperate them, as they say, uh, at any time. And that's what that is why. People are defenseless against uh, what you mentioned before, the, the colectivos, about 400,000 uh, criminal gangsters trained by the Cuban government and by the, the FARC terrorists uh, from Colombia. And they, they really run most of the many regions of the country in practice as an organized crime uh, extortion group. But if, if ordinary people don't have guns at home, it must be an incredibly safe country. That's the promise of gun control, right? Is it an incredibly safe country? It has the, the second highest murder rate in the world uh, behind only uh, Honduras. It's an incredibly dangerous country. And uh, it was dangerous before the, the gun law was passed in, uh, in 2012. Uh, but things seem to keep getting worse and worse. I mean, it, it's a, you know, the, Ch the Chavez Maduro regimes uh, have always been kleptocracies, basically based on uh, running the government as an organized crime syndicate uh, for the principle of theft. And that has uh, had a lot of. Uh, has infected a lot of society. It's a, it's a terribly dangerous place. So, I mean, I'm starting to think that a lot of the precepts of American gun control schemes may not be right then. If you take guns out of the hands of most people, your society doesn't get safer. It turns out that the government may turn against you, actually, if you can't fight back against them. Is there any upside to gun control in Venezuela that I'm missing? Well, Maduro said he was doing it for the for the children, and this was a youth-led movement uh, oh. to, to disarm the public. But you, you, you see the dangers of what happens when the government becomes more powerful than the people. Uh, then it's like you've thrown the fire extinguisher out of your house, and you're dependent on the other checks and balances, and uh, he destroyed those as well. He, he was doing it for the children. I didn't even know that. That is such a great detail, and a detail I will never forget. Thank you very much for that. Thanks for having Good to me. See you, David.